I mean, I was going to call it Roosh V, colon, the world's least subtle serial date rapist. Do you think that'll be, is that a reactionary enough? <clears throat> or do you think I should go for something a bit less subtle? <clears throat> I'm going to go with, so I'm going to go with the original Beetle Roosh, Beetle Roosh, Beetle Roosh. Now this is how you can tell for a start that, Be that Roosh V, uh, you know, there's, there's there's always been issues surrounding him and his tactics and methods. You can tell the first one is simply by his name, Roosh V. He's so much into rape that he names him, he's got a name that sounds exactly <laughs> like Roofy. Now that can't, but now you could say that's a fucking accident. Now, but the fact of the matter is, what are the odds that that would happen? That a guy who gives himself an accidental name sounds exactly like a date rape drug. That that's there, there's I want I don't know I don't know whether the guy's actually done that by accident or not. But if he hasn't, he should do. So, do she? That doesn't work as well. Ryan, shut up. <laughs> it doesn't. No, look, Ryan. I'm the one who knows the fucking jokes. We've established that. Anyway, so Rouge V was going to be in, was you know doing a speech in Canada, God knows fucking what, and they uh, they was they were trying to deny they, what well, they wanted him officially to be denied entry into into Canada. There was a petition there, uh, but it didn't work. And they should really have learned their lesson because let's face it, Rouge V is one man. He's he's shown us any, one thing about himself that denying him entry into anything does not stop him going in. Now. The reason I was deciding to randomly focus on Rouge V was because I did, uh, I when I did Aurini. I've had my Aurini phase. I've gone through that, right? And uh, I, the, the the thing is now I've got to move on from that. But I figured I'd do Rouge anyway. I'm calling it now. I'd call him. I'd do Rouge anyway because I've always avoided Rouge on the account that I found him too fucking creepy, right? I, I, he just, I just, he gave me the fucking willies too much. So. Let's have a look at the uh, so what we got here. So we're just going to go through what I've got here. What I managed to find was uh, <clears throat> now everything I'm going to show you. These aren't rumors and stuff. These aren't things that have been like uh, uh, quotes out of God. These are actually from uh, every, these are from everything he's ever fucking written, said or done. And I would actually challenge anyone to find examples of him where he's not saying stuff that's horrible because that would actually be a lot more difficult. But there's no, there's no fucking out of context stuff here, right? So what the first problem we got was, and this was the most recent one, and you probably heard about this one, was when he he, he made a video advocating a law where he wanted us to, he wanted uh, rape to be made legal on private property. Now, that's the first thing right there. He's he's arguing for rape to be legalized when you go into private property. Meaning that there, as soon as you go into someone's house, so if you pick a woman up at a bar, the second you go into that, that she goes into your your house, she knows, and this is his this is his thinking, because she knows that, and he reckons if you make it like if you remove the if we stop cheap treating women like children, uh, that's what he says, and we make it we make it legal for them to be raped on private property, they'll probably look after themselves just as well as they do their phone or their iPod. So he thinks that women go into an, a house, right, where there's, like, and they're more worried about their phone or their iPod, which, by the way, still get nicked. And his whole, his whole premise is built around the idea that if we if we give women, like, if we give them more incentive by making it legal, we could just make it legal everywhere. And that's, he doesn't make that argument. Right. But if anyone doesn't find that fucking, if anyone doesn't stop and think, you know, legal, you want to legalize rape, why is that? Why not do it? Every, why not make everything? Why not make? Why not do that same law but with everything else? Why don't we get rid of drink driving? Uh, get rid of drink driving laws. We can get rid of get, fucking, carry the guns everywhere. You can do everything you want. Make murder. Why don't we make it legal for everyone to do anything they want anywhere to Rouge V and nothing bad will happen to him. This is what he's doing. Right? So that was the first one, but that's more recent one. So I want to get that one out of the way first. Now, he did end up, uh, he was, it, this is, there's clips, there's um, quotes here from an interview he did uh, for, a, I forget what it's called now. It's called The Daily Dot, but there's bits and pieces from other, uh, 
other websites as well. Now, he does say in the interview I read, the, he opened it. This was out. This was not in the interview. This was in the phone call before. He he told the guy, you know, I'm going to end up being compared to Hitler. Now, being compared to Hitler is not something that's like big deal on the internet. But if you're preemptively suggesting this to the person who's interviewing you two days before you go in, and ironically, he has ended up on the Southern Poverty Law Center, uh, <laughs> yeah, on site, which is where a lot of fucking Nazis Nazis do end up. But Roosh has got a better one here. Another interesting thing about Roosh is he's one of the few people who actually uh, he incurred the wrath of not only the Southern Poverty Law Center. But also Stormfront. Uh, there's a thread about him on Stormfront because uh, uh, Roosh is, I don't, I can't remember what it was specifically. He's from, he's Middle Eastern origin, right? He's a Middle Eastern extract, right? But he's, he's um, from some shit part in the middle. But, but yeah, they basically have this, they had a spread over in Stormfront. And their complaint about him was the fact that he was the, because they used him as the typical coming over here, bloody pickup artist. They're coming over here, taking their knobs and raping our women. And there's, and they, they had the, the, so the SP, the SPLC and Stormfront united as one. Now you have to be a spectacularly fucking demented human being to be able to create that fucking alliance in the first place. But here's an example of Rusi's standards, right? When he's in, uh, when he's dealing with, with, with women, because he always has these, he has these very peculiar sort of, uh, uh, I wouldn't say fetishes, but things that he likes. And they always seem to be geared towards making the women, like, uh, negging on the women and sort of destroying their confidence. For example, um, this is a quote from him, from his website, Return of the Kings. I'll be the first to admit that many of my bangs, this is a man in his 40s, many of my bangs in the United States were hate fucks. The masculine attitude and lack of care these women put into their style of their hair irritated me, so I made it a point to fuck them and never call them again. As opposed to all the other women who had their hair done, who he fucking, you know, went out with her. He's going to do that anyway. Right? But he, he he sees a woman with bad hair or, or masculine hair, whatever the fuck that is. And this is a guy with floppy hair, floppy long hair. He will make a point to have to f hate fuck them and then never call them again. Now, but but this is the interesting thing. <clears throat> whilst your hair, if you whilst he'll get pissed off with you about the fucking hair, right? Whilst he'll get pissed off with you about the hair, here's something he will like because he wrote an article. It's on the Return of the Kings. He wrote an article on Return of the Kings called Five Reasons to Date a Girl with an Eating Disorder." Now, in this, he basically says that because there are so many fat, unattractive women in the fucking world, that when you go out of a woman with an eating disorder, there's no sort of, it's not, she's not going to end up going that way. Forget the fact that it's some mental illness and this person's going to possibly starve to death. But he would rather, and this is, this is the way he puts it, he, he was asked about whether he felt that maybe, you know, maybe encouraging men to go out with women who had eating disorders was somehow, you know, a bit, you know, it was horrible. And he said, no, it actually helps them. It reduces the stigma of eating disorders. It doesn't reduce the eating disorder, obviously. More insult. What's more insulting is the 150 million women that are fat. Why don't American women understand that men don't like women who are fat? Right, that's not true, girls. Call me. Right? They're f then he says this, fat women, right, of fat women, they are forcing us to search for creative ideas in order to in order to date someone we find aesthetically beautiful. One thing I'd say is I'd rather date a woman who has a mental illness and weighs 110 pounds than one who doesn't and weighs 200. Now, so if your hair is a little bit messy, girls, this man will make a point of trying to get you in a corner and pound, bang, bang you on the arse until you're screaming and then fucking never call you again. But if you suffer from mental condition or body dysmorphia and you're severely malnutrished, he's going to be more interested in that, you know, because that's something else. I don't know. You read into that what you fucking want. <sighs> now, but never mentions the women that called him. But yeah, <laughs> well, it's an interesting thing. It's a point there. Because isn't it interesting that you've got, you've got this guy who claims to have shagged all these thousands of women? Where are all the women at some point who have shagged him? There must be, there's got to be some who are going to come out and I mean, you can't shag that many people 
and and not get and get away with it surely you know, there, there must have been people there who were going to back up or verify his story but they but there's it's not i mean maybe they're ashamed they should be i would be if this was me right anyway where are we now so uh so yes we've gone from having messy hair not Ill, not cool that will get you fucked in the ass uh but no you have an eating sword that's cool here's one for you though here's another one um if if because if he was asked if uh, he was asked about the statistics of women who are sexually assaulted and this is honestly what he said he was he's not sure if a, if a man if a man has sex with his unconscious girlfriend whilst he's drunk he's not sure whether that's rape right he's just not sure i think the, the exact way he put it was if the woman's unconscious that sounds like rape but if it was her boyfriend i don't know that is the problem we're all losing our sexual human instinct now because anyone tell me a fucking dumber sentence there then we're all losing our sexual human instinct are there not am i missing something are there not suddenly are there not six billion more people on the planet at the start of this century than there were than there were at the beginning there's like a massive we're quite clearly not but no, he's but he's not sure, right? He's he's not sure about it. You notice he never talks about. It. He's never whenever he talks about these, he always focuses on the man having sex with the woman. He never makes that sort of like he never makes the sort of other comparison as if it was done the other way. But he tends to also struggle. This is an interesting one. Uh, when he was talking about the issue of gender, he said today he said the problem in the U.S. today where women act like men, men act like women everyone's kid this is a guy who's friends with davis arini now he's talking about men who back like, in make too little effeminate men who make a little bit too much effort he said men act like women everyone's confused well if he's friends with davis he is and they're making things up like they're pansexual they're this they're that gender this is what he says gender is a binary construct cis trans Right now, I'm confused. Right, so this is what this is his position on gender. If it's more than two things, he doesn't get it. He can't deal with numbers above two. Right, you have to put everything into a binary for him, or he's just he can't handle it anymore. And you notice he always says this about like genders. He always says you're this, that, and he's about to do the same thing with homosexuality. But when it comes to men and women, we can't sort of make choices. When he says that this is what he says he he, uh, he thinks that being gay is a choice he thinks it's a deviant lifestyle uh and he thinks that allowing them to get gay will cause a, a huge increase in mass immigration the quote he's the quote here is in america we're giving them we're giving we're giving the kids or shove them into a gay place treatment like uh please be gay it's great it's a sick culture one that doesn't treat people traditional gender with traditional gender roles they don't reproduce on their own because gay people don't have kids which they wouldn't do even if you had gay marriage he thinks you've got to replace the like potential people you would get in if we had have not made them gay with illegal immig with, with immigration right it's the downfall you know it's the down I've, got, I've got nothing against gay people and what they do in their own homes he fucking has because he, he can't upset Davis, he goes. But the, um, but this will this will cause the downfall, and it will be caused by the millions of happy gay couples. That's his exact words. Millions of happy gay couples will cause the downfall of civilization. This is just it, this is just that Rome bullshit all over again. <clears throat> Where were we now? Uh, so we got that one. Uh. uh did you, did you, all right. Uh, does it? I oh, wouldn't put that one. <clears throat> yes, here we are. Now, Roosh, Roosh, who is now Roosh, who is unmarried, single, has no children, and is a serial sex pest, made the following claim: Men are genetically men genetically prefer women for their fertility. Has any bloke here ever gone to a bar and? looked at a woman and think she's fucking fertile has anyone ever have you ever asked a woman the potential fertility of uh no you in fact you would probably at that age you probably wouldn't be interested in that the last thing he's bloody gonna want is it but yes apparently men genetically prefer like women don't do that when you get a bloke who 
like a woman a woman sees a man she finds attractive holding a baby it's like she doesn't her ovaries don't friggin explode Men genetically prefer women for their fertility. This is evolutionary biology. Yes, because that's what applies to us in nightclubs. I'm not saying anything weird or strange. I just think the best fit for most women is to be mums, and apparently that's a revolutionary idea. We have intellectual pursuits, drink, what, drink wine. Those are the two things he mentions. But he says intellectual pursuits, and he can only think of drink wine. He said, but let's not joke ourselves. Our purpose is to reproduce. This is, this is a man who goes around indiscriminately shagging people and never they're not, never calling them back. And he's lecturing us on what we should be doing and, the, and what our jobs should fucking be. He also seems to forget he, he crit, he's got a big problem with women who sleep around, re, not realising that if every man acted like him, they would have no choice but to because it wouldn't be. Otherwise, the numbers wouldn't bloody match up. But also. In, on the issue of whether or not men and women are equal, they, uh, Roosh V, a guy who sells self-published books about his sordid world rape tours, thinks on the question of uh, are men and women equal, he says, absolutely not. They are not equal, they're just not. A woman can be a genius and win a Nobel Prize, but there's something about being a man that drives us to accomplish, to achieve, to experiment. None of these things are what Roosh has ever done. The, this is the bit. The entire modernist movement is training women to act like men with small dicks. That's what we call the full or on that one. Now, and just to sort of compound that bit on the equality issue, on the equality issue, uh, when talking about women who vote, women voting, he decides to quote Winston Churchill. What's wrong with leaving with women and never calling them back? I don't fucking know. Right? I'm not even talking about that. Well done. Wait, find the most irrelevant part of the fucking thing I've said there. Don't talk about everything else I said. Just go for that bit. Yeah, that'll work out. He says, Winston Churchill said if we allow women to vote, every liberal cause under the sun would come forth, and we've seen that happen. If you want a traditional society, allowing women to vote won't work because they're not going to want that. As we await, you know, as we as we sit here awaiting Hillary to take over. And he, but he does say he is a bit pragmatic about this. He says, he says, but can we take the vote back after we've given it to them? You really can't take away the vote. It's very hard to take back once you've let them have it. I don't know if he realises the subliminal me messaging within that sentence, the sort of subtext he's created for himself. Because that is actually quite accurate. Because he's Once you've given someone something, you can't really take it back. And uh, he would know about this um, quite dearly. Because, like... I, I, for the people who are wondering, who aren't sure after all this, as to whether or not Roosh might have a bit of a fucking, you know, he might be a little bit coercive and such. Uh, let's just let's talk about his book. Um, and I, the reason he, I'm going to call him a rapist is not because of my opinion on what he's done. And I'm not going to call him a rapist based on some, you know, it's based on some little vague thing or a rumour. I'm going to use the words that he wrote in his own book. He does a series of books called Bang. Again, this is man's in his 40s. He does a and he goes like, there's Bang Denmark. No, it's, it's Don't Bang Denmark, because he didn't fuck anyone over there. There's Bang Iceland, and there's another one. I forget the other one, what it's called. But um, these are books that he wrote that are sold for the general consumption of the, of the population. And he, he's in Iceland. No, he's not in Iceland. It's in the book in Iceland, but he's not in Iceland. And he show, he teaches this technique, which is called uh, uh what's it, it's it's a technique called the after party move, right? Now it's it's <laughs> the after party move. What this basically involves, and I'll break it down because it's a bit. It's not as a uh, it's not as complicated as he thinks. Basically, what you do is you go to an after party. You find which woman is the drunkest. You get her incredibly more drunk. You make sure that she's kept away from her friends. And then when she's drunk enough and she's on her own, you grab her by her arm and drag her back home, back to hers. Because she's going to go there because <clears throat> there's none of her friends are there. So that's that's the after party move. It's subtle, right? It's just get someone drunk and drag them back to your cave. And I'll let Roos carry on here. I'll, I'll quote him on it. This is from the book after he's dragged her back, after he's uh, sort of left the place and he's dragging her back. 
<clears throat> I hooked her arm and we went off. Romantic. The best thing that could po that possibly could have happened was a failed after party. Uh, th there had to be a moment when she realised that all her friends had gone, and the only reasonable option was left uh, uh, left was to go home with a strange man she'd just met. While walking to my place, I realised how drunk she was. <clears throat> In America, having sex with her would have been rape. Now he's he. Now, that's how drunk this woman was. He knows this. He's not unsure. He's not saying that he couldn't decide. He's he's already admitted that at this point he knows this woman is too drunk to be able to consent. Uh, in America, having sex with her would have been rape since she couldn't legally give her consent. It didn't help matters that I was relatively sober. He can remember that. But I, but I can't say that I cared or even hesitated. And this is the killer part at the end of this line. I won't rationalise my actions, but having sex is what I do. Now, if he didn't have to tell this story. Now, he wrote this book. He had he had. No, what if men? To, we're not talking. Motherfucker. Not everything is about you. Go away. Jesus Christ almighty. Oh, what about men? What about men? Fuck off. Jesus, I'm talking about something else. Jesus, fuck. what is wrong with these little stupid bastards? Now, he let's, let's look at what Roos says. Roos acknowledges she's drunk. He acknowledges the law that she's too drunk to, that he's drunk enough to know that. And then he says, you know, and then he says he didn't care or hesitate. He wouldn't rationalize his actions. He hasn't been able to think of something to make up in order for him to be able to actually make this look like something that would, that, you know, he could try and turn around and spin it about. But this is the worrying bit. Um, it's, 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 this is what he says. Uh, I'll protect myself with a condom most of the time. He says, but. I know that when it comes to sex, one ounce of hesitation or feeling of morality will get me nothing. Now he's that's that's his this is a man that's who he is, right? He will not if he want if he thinks there's sex on the cards, he won't stop or think about it because he doesn't want to feel anything when he's fucking them. It might stop him from doing it. So there you go, right? If you don't want to, if that's not enough for you there. <laughs> <clears throat> if that's not enough for you there that, that he just, and here's the question we should really ask ourselves about this is why exactly why exactly would he, he why would he fucking bother writing that out because you would think he'd try and hide it but it's, here's the interesting thing Rouge Fee is not very good at what he does he's actually he's actually incredibly uh, men think with their penis. No guests. Like, so we've all. Been, lo there are loads of men who have been in positions where they could have done something, but they didn't because it's wrong. That's not thinking with your penis, right? He consciously made a decision to rape someone just because he thought he would rather do that, and he didn't care. And here's a reason why he might not have done. Right? This is Rouge V. Like, now just keep, we'll go back to that story in a bit as to why that's there. Right? But he has no understanding of what the word hate means, right? He, he, this is a sentence he wrote. He goes, I'm, I don't hate women, and I'm not saying that you should hate women. But my initial impression of them is that their lubricated holes exist mostly for men's sexual pleasure. Now, that's a sentence that man wrote, right? He wrote that sentence, and he didn't see the disconnect there. This is not like one of these stupid... Oh, I'm not racist. I just don't like that. Or oh, I'm not. I don't hate Muslims. I just say that he's just sat there and just described women as a gap in the air that exists for their pleasure. But here's the other interesting thing about him, and and he's, he's again saying this out loud so everyone can hear it. Roosh is Roosh is a pickup artist, but one thing he doesn't do is he's not he, he, by his own admission he cannot teach you how to have sex well. Now, it's not because he doesn't specialise in that area. It's not because you can't teach someone that. It's because he literally does not care. Right? He wrote an article. Uh, he wrote an article on his website, uh, Return of the Kings. This is the title of the article. Uh, the, the title of the article is, It Doesn't Matter If She Orgasms or Not. 
he wrote this down. He's like, if you make her orgasm on, he says, the best sex I've ever had was mediocre for girls who let me treat their bodies like garbage receptacles. If you make her orgasm on demand, you'll definitely hear from her again, but it's not necessary and it's just too complicated to worry about. Keep in mind that some girls barely know how to make themselves even orgasm. Yeah. He says, every now and again, I get the feeling that I may have given a girl an orgasm, but I can never be sure because I don't ask. Now, he's, this is the thing. This man's going to be a pickup artist. His whole thing is to teach people right, how to do it. But he's not doing that. This is not what he's doing. Go back to that story about the, 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 what he did that woman from uh, in that book, in, a book about Iceland. What is it? Why is he writing that? It's not because he's fucking. It's not because he's uh he's got no filter. He knows what he's doing. He knows the the, the events he just described in that are not going to be held. He's not going to be held accountable for. What's going to happen? You've got this drunk woman coming back, and he's going to fuck her. What's the reaction going to be that he knows his audience is going to give? She's like, shouldn't have been fucking been there. Should, shouldn't have been fucking drunk. She shouldn't have been doing that. Why was he there? For? He was just there. She shouldn't have gone back with him. She's going to get blamed for what he did to her right there. Even though you heard right there from his own voice, from his own fucking words and his own writings that he knew and he didn't fucking care. He just wanted to do it. But he knows he'll get away with it. It's the same with the fucking not bothering, letting, make, not giving him any pleasure. Because why should you? Fuck him. That's what he's doing. So all I'm saying is, right, when you see people, or if you're someone who ever asks those questions of women in that position, right, that's what fucking happens, right? This is not a case. Roosh is, no, Roosh is a guy who's caused a lot of problems. He's a product of a fucking, of an environment where he knows he can do something like that, and he's got, he's not going to get on the, he's not going to get as much stick for it as he can, because there's going to be a focus on why that, and she was there, regardless of the fact that he was able to make that decision, and he's not going to be held for it. And he can't be, because because unfortunately, if I, don't, I don't know what the full ramifications of the law is, but just because he's written it down doesn't mean they can't find the girl. So, yes, uh, yes. So the, basically, I would just like Roosh V to be killed, and that will be enough for me. There you go. That's what's going to be the crux of what was going on. Yeah. Oh, his pickup lines are, let's go. We leave him. So there you go. Powers, water. That didn't take as long as I thought. I, don't, I just felt longer when I was going through it this morning. <laughs> when I was trying to read all that shit. Beach, you know you can ask me a question, girl. Oh. Uh, so let's all remember, uh, in many ways, he's right, really. Really, that's that why you sat in here. Go away. You boring bastard. <clears throat> and you can't even get one, can you, mate? You're not even that. Would you rape someone to save their life? What is fucking stupid? What does that even mean? Are we talking? Has, has Rouge V saved someone's life? Are we talking about that? Right? Is that even a fucking? Is that even relevant to what I'm talking about? Now, is that even? Is that got any point to it? Would you do it? I like, I don't fucking know because I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> it's just what the fuck? That's see, that's what I mean. It just I've just gone through all that and you get. Well, would you rape someone? To I'm never gonna have to. <laughs> that's never going to happen. You, that's the fucking answer to the question. Uh, where, where, did Beach put a question? <clears throat> no, he didn't. Okay. <clears throat> oh, Christ. Where were we? <clears throat> You're just slightly confused by the questions. Don't worry. They're not either. I didn't throw. I didn't. I didn't throw the other guy out. I just. It's just ridiculous. Okay, would you poo? Would you do it? Would you take a piss? Would you? Would you come on a baby? Would you come on a baby in a baby's mouth to save like the? the but you didn't get to. You see, it's a stupid question. It's like that. It makes no sense. Does Roosh also put? I don't know. Well, no. Roosh doesn't push the idea of marriage. I mean, Roosh will push the idea of marriage. I haven't found anything. Uh, I haven't found anything like that. Um. But I, but I don't think he's interested in marriage. But he's interested in sort of telling people. But he's not interested in himself. He's got no. He's like he's 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 basically set in his ways to stay where he is. You know that's it. That's it. That's fine. But like I said, there's so much on there. I mean, I would have to sit here for. for I'd, I'd sit here for hours going through it all. He's got three books. Some of them are fictional. 
right? I read them. <laughs> there was a website called Piece of Shit Book Review, and he, every one of his books was on it. And I did. I didn't. I don't have that link there, but um, but that, that's basically where it. So he, yeah, he doesn't want to pay. No, he's just, he's not interested in that. No. He's, he's not he's not really into i mean he's a lib, he's got that libertarian thing which is why you get the argument like rape on private property because that's the sort of get out of all of it but but yeah you know but if you're going to make the rape on private property one you can't just make the rape one because it it kind of it people are going to ask questions about it you know yes rush is the legalized rape guy that's how he should be known and Sargon of a card is now officially known as Sargon. I don't care if Davis Arini fucks kids a card. <clears throat> and Davis Arini is so fucking bad. He's just called Davis Arini. We're going to stick it there. Fleshlight sharp. <laughs> they don't talk in the first place. So that's not even really makes sense. So one, but yeah, whatever. <laughs> He's trying. No, I think no. He, he with Bruce to, to Grouchy's credit, and this is very little credit. He does. He lives his lifestyle. What he does, he doesn't like. Like I said, this is why if someone was asking me, "Is Davis Arini? Is uh, David? Who's worse, Davis Arini or Bruce?" And I said, "Bruce's, because Davis Arini doesn't do that." You know, but I happen to know that. When Roosh and uh, when Roosh and Orini hang out together, lads, fucking seven brides for seven brothers, they go to bars and they stalk the women who are there to see who's the drunkest, and then they move in. I'm like, that's hardly artistry, is it? Beach, I know it was, but it winds people up. <laughs> you know, you know, it's it winds him up. <laughs> Well, yeah, I mean, but, but the thing is, Roosh doesn't get to, I mean, I know that Roosh isn't ever going to get anywhere and get taken seriously on an, any level, but he gets taken seriously enough. That's his job. I mean, this is his job. He hates fucking, he, he, he hates women with a, a passion. He, he's got no fucking time for them, but they're the, without them, he can't fucking do his job. And that's when you know you're, you're in real fucking shit. And this is the guy who's best friends with Davis Arini, the guy who's involved in this. And it's all about ethics and stuff like that. And that's the problem. You know, that's the problem with all this old people like him come along. You know, and the, the more I read, I didn't even read half a like, little tip of the fucking stuff that I found. But, you know, you read all that stuff and you read about the way this guy behaves in bars and you sit there and you go, you know, what? I get it now. I get how women feel. Right. That when those women talk about like, you know, looking at men and being paranoid, it's because of bloke, bloke, blokes like him. It's not some weird conspiracy to make men. It's because if you read that and just pretend it's if you're a man, look at it from the sense of it's not you. It's your it's your sister or your mother or your daughter or it's some woman, you know, you tell if you knew that, that fucking Orini and Roosh were in a bar that one, a friend of yours was in, you wouldn't phone them up and say, get out of there. And it's because of people like him, that people like that men, nice guys, that's the reason we get this shit, because it's just not worth it, is it? Is it worth it just for like, I mean, to put up with that? I wouldn't fucking do it, you know. <clears throat> Get a woman to get... Yes, you're just full of great ideas, mate, aren't you? 